Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the European LTS. I'm Joe Miller along with Trevor Quickshot Henry as we head into the second half of today's matches. And up next is Fnatic versus the Super Hot Crew. Yesterday, Fnatic started off the sixth week of the European LCS with a bang as they took on the Copenhagen Wolves. It was a fairly one-sided game, though, with Fnatic really never looking back once they got rolling. I completely agree. And with the changes to the game in 4.10, it really looked like Fnatic have adapted a little more than most to the patch. Soaz appeared to be building towards that ardent sense in the top lane towards the end of the game. Reckless and Yellow Star absolutely destroyed the Wolves with their Wifesteal duo lane being Lucian and Thresh, of course. They absolutely decimated their opponents with constant picks, and Reckless in particular really showed a willingness to force objectives once he was ahead. And it was refreshing to see such a confident performance out of Fnatic. But you can't deny the fact it was against the weakest team in the European LCS. So they may have a tougher time here today against the Super Hot Crew. Yeah, and for the Super Hot Crew, they ended up losing versus Gambit in a game that was very back and forth and full of kills at the start. But honestly, as things went on, the Super Hot Crew started to win more and more team fights. That was up until a woeful decision to start a fight and engage all on the tanky Darian. Yeah, so the Super Hot Crew, they had this team composition that always needed time to scale and always had the ability to split push. I was actually relatively impressed with how well they managed to continually find ways to push the minion waves out while constantly under pressure from Gambit. It was clear that the later the game was going, the better their team fights became. And I do want to highlight just how well Mimer was playing once more. Last week it was Kale, this week's his jacks were strong. He found openings, ways into the back line of Gambit, but unfortunately it wasn't enough to actually help them win because his team made that monumental error to engage in the 50th minute, but only onto Darren. It ended up costing them the whole game. Uh, just very quickly before we move on, don't forget the last time that these two teams met, Fnatic and Super Hot Crew, the game went to 64 minutes. And the Super Hot Crew controlled Fnatic very, very well. They struggled to finish, but it was all about the Super Hot Crew pushing Fnatic back the entire game. And coming into this game, Mr. Riles feels that Fnatic's AD carry is a better player than he is on paper, but Reckless sees a lot of similarities between them and feels honored to play against Mr. Riles. Fnatic's style is naturally good against ours. They play like a very global kind of style, We're often going two TPs or whatever, one TP, one global. And naturally we're not that good against that, so it's kind of hard for us. Last game we had a pretty tough game actually, where I went to like 64 minutes or something. Uh, and I don't hope it's going to be like that again, because that was very nerve-wracking. The Nexus itself will be focused and the Super Hot Crew win a 64-minute epic here against Fnatic. Through the seasons, We've been at the top, then we fall down, and then we always manage to come back. But obviously, I'm not sure about this time because every team is improving so much. You need to be able to play from behind to know how to get ahead because you need to be able to know what puts you behind and also you need to know what they will do to get back in the game. I don't really care who I'm playing against. I only care which champion I'm playing against. I know Reckless is better than me, so to beat him would be pretty nice. Playing against him every time is like an honor for me. I really think he's like the new generation, kind of coming up with me. We have the same age, the same playstyle, the same champion pool, and we share so much information. So it's going to be cool to like develop my career outside of this, because I think he will be around for a long time with his motivation, because he's really good at the game. If you want to aim for the best, you have to put a lot of efforts to succeed. Kind of interesting to see the, the whole difference of opinion on that one with Mr. All saying he's just a better player than me and Reckless saying, you know what, we're the same age, same generation, if you like, of upcoming AD carries. Really cool to see that. I love hearing Mr. All say, I don't care who he is. Yeah, I think he's better, but I only care about the matchup. It's only the championing game that really matters. And it shows because he's performing so well against these tried and tested sort of old guard players that are on stage. Great to see new talent coming through, that's for sure. Let's go check it out the team lineups though for this game. On the blue side, we have Fnatic with Soaz in the top lane, Cyanide in the jungle, Xpeke in the mid, Reckless, of course, the AD carry, and Yellow Star the support. And on the red side for the super hot crew, it is Mimer in the top lane, Impaler in the jungle, Selfie playing the mid lane role with with Mr. Riles and Kasing, formerly Yero, in that support role. And that brings us on to our featured matchup as we do take a deeper look at the supports with Fnatic's Yellow Star taking on the new man on the crew, Kasing. So Yellow Star was incredible on Thresh yesterday. He hit all of the important hooks, especially in the last minutes of the game. And if you compare the kills, deaths, and assists, you can really see how much Yellow Star hard carried. 
Kasing, while on the losing end of the match against Gambit, still had a brilliant showing. He landed multiple Nami bubbles on multiple members during the course of the game. And it's not the first time that his Nami was fantastic. Last wing in London, he had a very high level. Mm. I do want to highlight that Kasing currently has more assists per game on average than Yellow Star. And in terms of the vision, Yellow Star currently leads the European LCS for total number of wards placed. In terms of per game averages, Kasing is on par with Yellow Star at the top in terms of those placements per game. So we'll see how Kasing does in the vision matchup and the vision meta as it was in this battle. Well, before we get to the game, let's take a look at your votes for this matchup. According to lolesports.com, Fnatic leads, who would have thought it, with 81% of the vote. Very interesting because Fnatic are only seven wins and six losses, while the Super Hot Crew are six wins and seven losses. Yeah. This game, very realistically, could be the evening up of seven and seven for both of these teams. Going to be a very interesting one. And as we move towards Champions League, let's talk a little bit about it and what we expect to see. Yesterday, as we already mentioned, the Super Hot Crew lost, but they didn't actually play all that badly. No, they really didn't. They fended off the early game aggression from Gambit. They stalled the game long enough until their team comp was arguably much more powerful, but a bad decision cost them the game. I do feel that Morgana is going to be banned up by one of these teams. It was done so yesterday, and I imagine Twisted Fate may be a contested pick. The question for me is, do Fnatic allow Yasuo through picks and bans? It's something Selfie has done very well within the past. I was going to say also a question, do they let Kale through? And Well, that was answered straight away by Fnatic. They took that out as the first ban, and Jax as well. So really targeting what's been strong for Mimer in these last couple of weeks. On the other side, the Super Hot Crew taking away six, and the Morgana, as you expected there from Yellow Star. What will Fnatic go for here as their third and final ban? Cassadin is up. Twisted Fate is up. Um, in terms of junglers, all of the junglers are up. So there's a lot of priority picks. I think Twisted Fate and seeing how well Peke and Froggen, I think, have played in recent weeks, I wonder what they're going to go for. I wonder if one of those champions is a consideration to be banned. Well, we see Evelyn banned out there and Cassidy taken away. Red side banned. Fnatic now having a strong first pick, I'd say, in this game. The likes of Twisted Fate, we saw it already um, in OGN this morning. Actually, we saw Froggen first pick in the likes of Twisted Fate. However, Fnatic really putting a lot of uh, importance here on first pick in their AD carry, taking Twitch as the first choice. Now, this is the first European Twitch of 4.10. I'm going back in my notes, and I'm 99% I'm sure on that one. And it's going to be in the hands of Reckless. Arguably, the itemization choices in 4.10 make Twitch stronger, thanks to the sort of buff to Ghost Blade and uh, the, the buff to the damage on, on Blade of the Rune King. But on the other side of the coin, He's been nerfed in this patch. His lower, uh, lower damage from his uh, passive, as well as the ambush taking a longer time to charge up. So we need to keep an eye on how, um, how Reckless plays this game, because he's going to have uh, a weaker laning phase thanks to the patch. Did see it this morning, though, for death for Samsung Galaxy Blue in their first game victory over SK Telecom T1K. So we'll see if Reckless can bring that kind of level. On the other side, the Super Hot Crew also going to be taking an AD carry as they pick up Lucian and also Braum as a support. Stuns for days. Thanks to the Light Slinger passive on Lucian as well as those concussive blows, I believe it is, from Braum. You the combo is just so good at locking people down. So if Fnatic are ever in a 2v2 situation and they don't have the likes of Thresh maybe as a support to try and punish Braum early on, they could be in trouble. Yellowstone and Thresh has been playing significantly better, but we have also been seeing the Twitch Nami combination in recent weeks. The disengage and the movement speed plus the damage that Nami offers Twitch can be very beneficial. You'll notice both of these teams are ticking these timers down. Junglers, with Elise and Lee still available, they're not been locked in yet. And as I say, it does look like Cyanide's going to pick at least one of them. Yeah, we'll see Elise for Cyanide here in the jungle. And Peke sporting a new haircut, cut a little bit shorter than he wanted, apparently, according to Twitter. We'll be taking the twisted fate in that mid lane. Now for the super hot crew. Bottom lane is locked in with the Brahm and the Lucian lane. Question then is where do they go next? We've seen Selfie uh, earlier on in the split actually when Yasuo was allowed through to get to him. In fact, that first game that we saw that was against Alliance, I believe, in the first week. And he was incredibly, incredibly good with it. And yesterday his Yasuo was still good most of the time. But it was his engage onto Darius Renekton that you could argue cost the game. He was the one that jumped in. Impaler, you know, he was trying to bait, he was trying to pull people away. The interesting hover for me is, in, is the Rengar. 
And the reason I think it's an interesting hover is it's most likely going to be in the jungle. We've seen it first pick today, I think, two out of the four OGN games, if memory serves. Bengi ran it, we've seen a bunch of players going, and you can build it either damage or tank. And the only reason I'm saying so much about the jungle options is Mima is the Rengar god in Europe, or was. But I don't expect this to be a top lane pick. If it does, it's definitely catching me by surprise. Yeah, well, as you said, was played by Bengi, then banned out afterwards in game number two. So we'll see if that goes to Impaler as we're expecting and what he can really bring to the table with it. We also saw that Kazix Rengar matchup earlier on, which we've not seen, well, I can't really, really remember when we have ever seen that, to be honest with you. Uh, but that's obviously not going to be the case here. At least already locked in for Cyanide. Fnatic looking for support and top laner for Soas. Bear in mind here that Lulu is available. A champion that he actually played better yesterday, I think, than we've ever seen him play it before. I completely agree. I also think there could be an argument put forward for the likes of a Trundle. Add more to some disengage power if they wanted to go that route. But it is going to be the expected. What I do like is the Thresh lock-in for Yellowstar, because Twitch and Thresh can actually deal with a Lucian and Braum in the early stages of the game. The range from Thresh allows him to poke and harass Braum down, and if Braum goes for a heavy engage, Twitch prior to 4.10 could sort of trade, thanks to his passive, thanks to um, the Expunge, I believe it's Contaminate now, onto Lucian. But we need to see if, if they're going to go for those 2v2s, if they want to look for the straight-up matchups. I think they would, because the destiny from uh, ex Pekka will also allow them to help counter that stealth initiation that Rengar brings to the table. So the Supermark crew then on their final choice, expecting the Rengar to go in the jungle and then leave us with a top lane choice for Mima in this game. A player who, to be honest, has really come into his own. I think when we saw him in uh, last year even in Season 3 and the start of this year in the Spring Split, he was fairly quiet, but he's been getting stronger and stronger as things go on. It's going to be a Shivana this time around for him, champion that he's well-versed with. This is all about selfie. You have knock-ups from Bram, you have knock-up from Shivana, you have knock-up from Yasuo. If Super Hot Crew are ever able to put Fnatic in a team fight scenario or a team fight situation, that five man wombo combo is terrifying. What is also good for the Super Hot Crew is because you've got a Shivana and a Rengar as well as a Yasuo, they can also play the split push game. The difficulty for them is how do they deal with the wave clear and the pick power that Twitch, Twisted Fate, and Elise offer. So Super Hot Crew have to maintain very good vision and arguably need to get ahead early because all of their damage is physical. There will be a point where Fnatic has enough armor to reduce Shivana, uh, Rengar, Yasuo, and Lucian's damage. And at that point, it becomes next to impossible for Super Hot Crew to win. Ticking time bomb, full AD comps seldom are successful at this mm. level of play. And also seeing a new champion in the jungle for Impaler. He's had his fair share of champions which we've not been impressed with. And on the other hand, champions that we've yeah. been very impressed with. So we'll see what he does here with Rengar today. But now that those champions are locked in, who do you guys think has the advantage in our featured matchup? Tweet at LOL Esports with the hashtag Yellowstar or Cassie. And it's interesting to see both Thresh and Bram feature because Morgana was banned out yesterday. We've seen them both foregone in favor of different picks, the Zyra, the Nami are yeah. growing in popularity, which I'm ecstatic to see, because the more champions we start seeing, the more diverse the playstyle is. But I do think the early game, the laning phase, is really where the Super crew have to get ahead. That once those Randians or Frozen Hearts or, or Thorn Mails get completed, well, I mean, what are you going to do? You can't burn through all that armor when everyone's physical. We're going to find out here. We are going to get into game for our third game here in week six, day two of the European LCS. Fnatic take on the Super Hot Crew. New champions coming to the table this week already. And we're going to see another one here in this game with Rengar in the jungle for Impaler. First thing I want to highlight, Yellow Star is once again playing Thresh. Yesterday, he had great death sentences. He also rushed a Talisman of Ascension after his Sightstone. It looks to be a similar case as he's grabbed himself that Ancient Coin. And the only reason I highlight that, none of the other Threshers have adjusted their GP10 focus. They've still been going for that Relic Shield to face the Mountain route. So let's see how that plays out. It also means if a fight were to break out in the lane, Yellow Star has less combat stats than Kassing on Brown. 
Also, I'd like to see a gold per hook item come in there because Yellowstar would have been really raking that in yesterday. Played amazingly well. And we'll see if he can continue that trend today. If we look at the start of this game, a minute in and already Fnatic up by the Super Hot Crew Red Buff and almost a mirror image on the bottom side of the map where the Super Hot Crew have sent two men down to put wards in early on and make sure that they've got vision of that one. Mimer is a little bit isolated from the rest of his team here. Will be spotting Reckless early on, but he's quick enough to get back to his turret. No real problem. And it looks like Fnatic just kind of back away completely of the Super Hot Crew jungle. Super deep vision from Fnatic, this is going to give them so much information to work with regarding the first clear of Impaler. So if Fnatic want to go for some sort of invade or some sort of cheeky play and Super Hot Crew back away from their red buff, they will have the opportunity to do that. As it stands, we may end up just seeing a straight up trade. It doesn't look like... Yeah. Um, it doesn't look like either team is really looking for any sort of engage and it's Fnatic that appear to be starting off the lane swap. Somewhat somewhat expected with an ancient coin start because Yellowstar loses those stats, but you, we have seen Threshers really punish uh, Browns in previous weeks. Yeah, we see Selfie going very aggressive and his passive shield there actually blocking all the damage that comes out of those cards at the start. So see how Selfie decides to play this one in the end. Peke losing out on quite a lot of CS there from that first wave thanks to the pressure. Yeah, very small play by Selfie, but it is, you know, it is his most uh, it is the champion that is most banned against Selfie. I do want to say that yesterday, under pressure from Ganks of Gambit, um, Selfie had a few dodgy sweeping blades with his E, sort of going into the middle of three and then forcing himself to flash out. So you could argue that sometimes his uh, under pressure decisions cause him a little bit of trouble, but he's off to a strong enough start and he's trying to punish Pekka with obviously the advantage of uh, the shield and the mobility gains from his flow. Also want to talk about the pressure while we're kind of on that topic here for Kasing. Obviously he's been brought in here now to replace We Will Failer and he's obviously going to be feeling some pressure to get some wins on the board. I mean the Super Hot Crew, they've not had a lot of time to really oh. gel in this one, especially with the duo ladies. Yellow Star, Cyanide and Soaz are now coming around but Selfie going on towards Peke there. I don't think he's got the damage. There is a flash out away from the hook. Can they catch up with him though? Three man coming in. We've got Mima that's looped around through the enemy jungle there to stop them and actually he will go towards that top lane and he does in the end manage to get away. Peke also blowing both summoners there. In addition to the summoner spells blown for Peke, Yellow Star forced, uh, used his flash as well. So if you just count summoner spells in terms of the bottom half of the map, advantage to Super Hot Crew. Mima was forced to teleport though to the top lane because there was a lot of pressure from Reckless. He got some auto attacks down, he had a minion wave pushing it up. But it is the risk you run on four point in low level dragon is worth more gold and if you lane swap to put your numbers in the top half of the map you open up the dragon to be secured early and super crew with that relatively safe actually incredibly safe early pickup yeah no one really going to be even dropping low i think from this one we're seeing the one that's just been tanking it up for those last few attacks, but that will be so, a dragon taken away for the Super Hot Crew. That Thousand was, gold lead. That was actually incredible damage juking from Kasing as well as Impaler. They avoided probably four or five of those dragon auto attacks. You can see they came away from the objective with more HP than previous, thanks to the juggle. There is a rotation time between auto attacks on dragon, and he managed to cancel them. So well played by Super Hot Crew. Mime is going to be forced out of lane. I don't know if they've got enough damage to kill him. We'll find out. It's already a lot coming down onto him. Flash is available though, so he could have taken that if he'd have been really forced to. Didn't quite work out for him though. And we see that Fnatic now have free reign on this top turret. So us and Cyanide actually chilling in the jungle. They'll allow both uh, Reckless and Yellow Star to finish off that turret on their own. Meanwhile, Selfie and Peke goes back into this mid lane. Selfie up to level five. Actually going for that Vamp Scepter first of all. So he's going to have a bit more sustain added into his lane. Yeah, we'll see how that works out for him. I, we just caught uh, a glimpse of Reckless using an ambush to get the bonus attack speed. That is a very big change to him on this patch. After he's initiated the Q, it can take up to six seconds to actually stealth up. And this is a 3v2 Super Crew in trouble. Oh, and Paler, the one that's going to be focused. And there is a jump in. Peke actually getting the last shot off and will get the first blood as well. Not calculating there, I think, that the two men from Fnatic were going to come running face first out of their own jungle. Yeah, unfortunate for Impaler. Just got surrounded from the sideline. Probably, probably wasted that flash, I think. Maybe didn't need to do it. Nevertheless. Uh, Fnatic landed all of the skill shots they needed to, and there's definitely a focus to unlock 
uh, this top half of the map. They really want to get that tower down. And there is the vote from Twitter. 88% of you thinking that Yellow Star gonna have the better time here. Oh. The support is a max rate, just like the Tamima. Will they follow through? That flash, as I said, wasn't used in the last encounter. Won't need it to be used here by Mima. My word, has Yellow Star improved his Thresh play? If you go back in the spring split at the beginning of this year, Yellow Star was an average Thresh at best. And in recent weeks, he is landing so many good death sentences. And very importantly, I think his Lantern ganks with the rest of his team have also synergized and continued to upgrade. That was just a great example of, uh, you know, judging his skill shots, angling it through the wall sort of on the right-hand side to land it on my man. It was just very well played by Yellowstar. And that himself is going to have the wave pushed up against his own turret. Shouldn't have too much problem with that. Just want to touch on the uh, AD carry CS at this point. 52 to 45. Both of them pretty much had a free reign on farm. Not really being pressured at all in these uh, bottom and top lanes. So we see that Reckless having the better time of that one. We actually saw Mr. Isles going for the Vamp Scepter first. Keep in, in mind the, the, the play from Fnatic. They have been invading and trying to control Super Hot Cruise Jungle the entirety of this game. From level one, they had deep vision. This is the first time Red Buff is respawning, and Fnatic are once again laying claim to this objective. They, of course, have the support of Reckless and Yellowstar in the top half of the map, which is why they can afford to make these plays. But it is also a focused, concerted denial of Impaler on Red God. They really want to try reduce the amount of time before he gets access to his ultimate and then can start setting up those stealth ganks because there is very good pick potential on the side of Super Crew as well thanks to the fact they've got Rengar in the jungle. Well, up until now, he's only been surprised himself, really, uh, as he came out of the jungle end of Dynas. Mimer again, gonna be pushed back towards his tower. The cocoon not quite landing onto him, and that uh, was already in range of that turret oh, itself. Look at Impaler is gonna be coming around. Do they have vision? They're going on. He does go around in there, has got his gold card pull, but will it be enough to get away? Use his flash as well. They're gonna go underneath the tower onto him as the slow comes down. The red card thrown back in there, and Peke surviving the 2v1, having to use his flash. Yeah, Kasing actually used Exhaust and Flash, but once again, they have forced Peke to blow his summoner spells. Selfie has continued to get a CS lead in this middle lane, and knowing that Peke has no uh, summoners available, that has to be a go signal for Selfie. He's got access to his ultimate, he's still gonna work maybe a little more attack damage or crits into his build to get the kill, but nevertheless, it's uh, the first sort of strong play from the Super Hot crew onto Fnatic. Speaking of Fnatic, they've just taken their first story of the game, finally finishing off that one on the top lane. Of course, it was Mr. Riles who finished off the first story for the Super Hot Crew down on the bottom side. And with that all said and done, the lead, the slight lead, which it really is at this stage for the Super Hot Crew, still remains mostly there from that mid lane where Self is having a good time of farm over Peke. So we need to see if Fnatic are going to challenge for this next dragon. Uh, they, they won't have the exact timer, or well, they probably have since they probably walked through the, the area, but Peke's got Destiny. Um, you see Selfie's return to lane with his Zeal. Impaler got the Madrid. It is pretty standard on Jungle Rengars to go for a Feral Flare, in fact, as one of his items, and just continue scaling up the damage. As you can see, Feral Flare has just been uh, completed for Impaler, the Riggle's Lantern, rather. Needs to get himself up to those 25 stacks, then it'll level up. But I want to know where Impaler goes next. With the tank in Shivana and knowing that he needs to get ahead in the sort of mid game, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for a more of a damage build, much like Nocturne from a few months ago. Go for that uh, Ghost Blade or maybe even a Blade of the Rune King. So we need to see what Empire decides to itemize. So with 30 seconds until the Dragon, we are seeing the teams moving towards the Dragon Pit, starting there, clearing out duties as well. It's mostly uh, Yellow Star and Cyanide that were off on that bottom side of the river, doing a good job of that. In fact, the Super Hot crew don't have any vision of the pit itself, so it's something that they're going to have to be figuring out here shortly. Although, so as recalling from that bottom lane will leave them one man down, at least for now. He, of course, though, does have teleport available if he should need to be called in for a dragon fight. And we've seen that Mr. Riles is still falling further and further behind in CS. It is a small amount right now, but in terms of the lane matchups, Reckless is just doing a better job 
at getting his uh, CS available. Impaler, that's his ultimate throwdown. They want Reckless. And they try and get in there on top of him. Can they actually lock him down? And there is half HP already taken away from Reckless. Here comes Kasing as well. Money is going to be going their way, surely. No, Reckless gets a stealth in. And there's the rest of the Fnatic team closing in. Impaler is now low. Fnatic take the last and over. There's a hook onto Impaler as well. And they're trying their best to get away. But here comes Selfie. He'll get himself one. Can he find any more Yellow Star? Got half HP still, and what a turnaround there from the Super Hot crew. That should open them up for a dragon as well. Reckless was able to get that ambush stealth off. While under damage, it can take up to six seconds to stealth up, but it was enough time for Reckless to actually deny uh, vision from his opponents and get out safely. I really like the aggressive play from Super Hot Korean Paler. Started that engagement, ran all the way into uh, Fnatic's jungle, and the support from the rest of the team was there. They get the kill, they get the dragon, and they get Destiny out of their game. I'm not sure really why I called it a turnaround because it was, of course, the Super Hot crew starting things off. But after seeing Fnatic close in onto them, didn't look good, but good reactions on both sides. And the Super Hot crew. Now looking very strong. 2,000 gold lead, give or take. See Soas head back up onto his top lane and get back into the farm. Actually, he's bang level, really, with Mimer at this stage of things. Found himself that Fiendish, uh, Fiendish Codex as his first item of the game. So we'll see how this one all develops. In terms of the AD carries, though, that we touched on earlier on, that lead in CS is still with Reckless. Both of them headed up towards the Blade of the Ruin King first. Yeah, even though the CS is in favor of Reckless, if you actually look at the total gold, thanks to the Dragons and obviously the assist in Mr. Al's side, he has a few hundred gold ahead. It hasn't equated to, you know, a massive amount yet, but it will be, uh, it is interesting to see that even though Mr. Riles has been on the back foot in CS, the map play and the objective play is working in his favor. And Impaler does have his ultimate available again. They might want to go for Soas here. See, he can actually speed away from this one. There was no ward inside of that brush as far as I could tell there. And I think that was just a case of Soas having the feeling that Impaler was going to head on towards his top side of the map and was able to saunter and off. Meanwhile, the Super Hot crew are finally going to get one of their own red buffs. So this is the first time since, actually this is the first red buff they've seen yep. on their half of the map. Super Hot crew have been invading Fnatic to steal their first and I believe second as well. Um, and that is obviously a testament to the fact that Fnatic no longer have resources in the top half of the, uh, of the map. Fnatic invested uh, a fair amount of time and a lot of vision into controlling the first 10 minutes of the game, which did work out. That whole top half was theirs, they secured the first tower, they secured the first blood. But Super Hot Crew with a great counterplay and movement on the bottom half of the map have allowed them to get the Dragons. And we touched on the extra gold that Mr. Riles has. Because he didn't invest that gold into Berserker's Greaves, he's finished his Blade of the Rune King first. So, Gunner Points like to go for that Blade of the Rune King into Ghost Blade build that we are seeing from Lucian's uh, on 4.10. Oh, let's have a see him. It's, as you said, behind uh, in CS, but still ahead in gold, which has really helped him out as well. Impaler, meanwhile, headed down towards this bottom side of the map. Is the focus here on towards Reckless? It makes sense when we hear what they both had to say in that video. So, Super Hot Crew need to try and find opportunities for the Yasuo uh, plus Rengar combo to look for kills. If the Super Hot Crew can sort of pull Fnatic into the lanes and use the, the power of that Thrill of the Hunt from uh, Rengar to come in stealth, land the stun from the E, and get kills, that's how they can open up objectives. But in terms of like wave clear, it's relatively unsafe wave clear from Super Hot Crew, and they don't want to put themselves in a siege situation because Lulu can wave clear effectively, because Twisted Fate can wave clear effectively, and even uh, Elise has got the uh, ranged explosive damage from her volatile spiderlings. So Super Hot Crew are really going to be looking to push waves and play the waves to actually find picks. Mid lane pushed out by all people of Kasing, <laughs> and up against Peke. I mean, he is already pretty damn tanky. Not going to be too scared of uh, what PK can throw at him there. Also, I have uh, Mr. Riles coming around to help him out there as well. Let's have a look down some of the other items. As you mentioned earlier on, we already saw that Riggle's Lantern coming out for Impaler and actually being left those big jungle camps so he can get that stacking up. Now, I do want to quickly mention in team fights, if Kasin can position himself correctly with that unbreakable shield, he will completely and utterly negate Reckless's damage. Reckless with his Ratatat Tat, that damage, that projectile will not go through the shield. So Kasing can 
really increase his team's chances um, in terms of these team fights. And that's before you even bring into consideration the likes of the Wind Wall from Selfie. Yep. So Fnatic do not want to put themselves in a bigger team fight, 4v4s, 5v5s. They want to be looking for Twisted Fate and Twitch to surprise people around either Elise and Lulu and use the smaller numbers to their advantage where their uh, smaller group of champions can outplay and get through those shields. Which is funny, really, because we've not seen Peke really using that Destiny up until now. Not exactly putting a big focus on this one. Maybe a testament to the Super Hot crew, making sure that their squishier, more vulnerable targets have been grouped up here. Because Singh and Mr. Riles pretty much sticking to each other this entire time. Rengar, of course, going about his business, getting that Feral Flare stacked up and leaving then the highly mobile Yasuo down bottom and Mimer on Shivana up top. So, Peke hasn't been able to because his team initiated the lane swap. And because the laning phase has been accelerated, we've had two dragons. Oh, Reckless is going in. Coming in behind them on this one. Will they be able to lock anyone up, though? Because they're going to block out all the damage. Does take the cocoon, but look at that. They throw as much as they can at him, and both of them end up surviving. That is exactly what we talked about two minutes ago. The unbreakable shield comes up, and Reckless is not able to break through it. What it does allow them to do, though, is get some damage on the inner turret. But thanks, of course, to uh, some, some defense from Supaku, they hold off for the time being. Zubar crew are split, and Mima, he wants to force this fight. Force it in there. There's eight seconds, actually, until the dragon comes up, so this could be a big one, as Peke is going to be using the Destiny. They've already got the one kill on to see The hook comes on Impaler with the play afterwards. It's Cyanide gets that, gets that and that's going to be the turret going down, and Fnatic can simply back away and take a dragon. Grab themselves two kills, one onto Impaler, one on Kasing, and that's just a very good play. Even though... Fnatic seem to be chasing Mimer and Selfie. Because of the mobility on their side of the map and obviously the power of Destiny, they just instantly catch Super Hot Crew. With the tower, the kills, and the dragon, they are now going to take the gold lead, and that was a very big swing in control, considering they were down 2k. Could be bad news for the Super Hot Crew. We've seen time and time again teams like Fnatic, these more experienced teams, I say time and time again. We have also seen them losing leads, but it's often uh, an anomaly, I think we can safely say, in the grand scheme. See, the Morale and Omicons actually being completed there as well for both Soas on Lulu and Xpeke on Twisted Fate. Yeah, there's even less likelihood of them going Athens and Holy Grail in this game because Athens already had its MR reduced in this patch and there's no magic damage threat. There's such a tiny amount of magic damage from Shivana and from Brown. It's not enough to necessarily itemize against. So once Soaz and Peke eventually start working towards the Zonya's Hourglasses, they're already going to be much more difficult to kill. Mima is going to have the support of Impaler fairly soon. And Soaz is actually just going to spot him out there a moment ago. So trying to pull Soaz in. Super Crew haven't been able to force Fnatic's hands yet this game. What Impaler can do though, he's going to be waiting around on that top side of the map, has his ultimate available. So as does have wild growth as well though, which may be able to keep him alive. Also with a flash in there and his turret is still up. And there we go, So as going to actually face check straight into this one. He's going to be forced to use the wild growth, trying to turn a bit of damage back around onto Impaler. Still has the flash available. Here comes Peke though, Destiny up to the top lane and they get the kill onto Impaler. They'll probably back away from this one with Mimer's ultimate running. But a great turnaround from Fnatic. So has face checking, but knowing that he had the backup, and now Cyanide's coming in. The cocoon going straight down the middle. Bit of a turnaround on this one as well. We're going to have Thresh joining the top lane in a second, but I think that's the end of that one. It does look to be the end of it. So as I think a little lucky to have the support of Peke. Because he was running through the bushes, had that just been a two on one, obviously Rengar can just keep hopping, skipping, and jumping to his target. Nevertheless, Peke lands, he pulls the red card, and he sends Impaler back to the base. Very well played by Peke. Look at this. Mr. Ross looking for a go on this turret. Actually saw that the lantern was thrown back in the lane there and thought, okay, who's going to be coming following that one through? I'm going to back away. Don't want to risk it. In the meantime, Selfie playing the split push game here for the Super Hot Crew this entire time. With Shivana and with Yasuo, once again, you can expect Super Hot Crew to play the split push game. They do have access to uh, the map play, the, the strategic play. And when you factor in that Impaler could gank either of those lanes if anyone's defending solo, it's a powerful combo. The problem that Super Hot Crew are running into is the wave player from Fnatic is very good. So as long as Peke or Soaz are on those side lanes, which you can see them doing right now, they're actually mitigating a lot of the presence and a lot of the threat that Super Hot Crew are putting down. 
see if they can break down this middle lane there. Now we can actually see Ghost Blade is done for Mr. Rolls. Brutalizer only just picked up for Reckless, so he's slightly behind on that front on the itemization. Yeah, and Impaler's just hit his Feral Flare not 20 or 30 seconds ago. So keep in mind that Feral Flare was adjusted a few weeks, a few patches ago, uh, where it is 30 stacks, not 25, and hitting it at the 20 minute mark is definitely not bad. It's, it's, a, it's a decent enough time. And as we talked about, he's going damage. Brutalizer, Hex Drinker, as well as Feral, he's going to keep stacking up that Feral Flare. When you've got a frontline in Shivana who is building full tank, it does make sense. But it also means if Impaler picks the wrong engage or gets counter engaged by Twisted Fate, he just gets shredded like you see in, in the top lane. Already seen that one happening. Went down for the first time in this game for first blood, which went over to Peke. He's now got his Zonya's Hourglass finish, so a bit more protection for Peke. And we'll see if that you now kind of opens some doors for them, whether they'll feel a little bit more comfortable to go in for and test how much damage he's going to have onto one of these split push lanes. Although you've got to say, Blade of the Rune King and Static Shiv now done for Selfie. That's still a risky fight to take. It really is. There is a very uh, powerful ability in that Hourglass to avoid this somewhat wombo combo team that Super Haku have put together. They, they can do a lot of different things with their comps, but let's see, where is Destiny going? I think they want Selfie, and there's so many members of Fnatic here. Yep, in fact, they're all going down there. Blade of the Rune King was used. Here comes the hook, and it's blocked out by the Wind Wall. Expertly done there by Selfie. And look at this, the Super Hot Crew gonna go straight towards that middle turret. They're gonna be able to take this one away. Peke will put down some decent damage. Soas is now coming in as well. Soas needs to be careful, actually flash from Peke. They're gonna go on towards Kasing. Oh! oh! They flash against the wall. Peke gets himself his third of the game. So they end up getting the Destiny from Peke and they do get the mid turret. I think that's not too bad for the Super Hot Crew, but they just took too much damage from the turrets once they were underneath there and it just allowed uh, Soas to zone them away. Now look at the defense from Super Hot Crew Culling, forced to be used, which will at least hold it off for this minion wave, but once Peke gets here, they are gonna have some even more threat on this inner turret. Can't well, underestimate the poke to come through as well when you're trying to hold on to those turrets that have been seized. Let's not forget the dragon as well, that's coming up in less than 40 seconds time, so. Big pick up here for whichever team will be able to get it in there. And the support crew will have Kasing coming back down into the lane in time for that dragon fight as well. So for Fnatic, this could be a very important dragon if they rush it. They should know that the culling is down, that the glacial fissure is down. But the thing you need to note, a lot of Fnatic's damage comes from skill shots, comes from glitter lances, comes from wild cards and ratatat tasks. And if the wind wall or the unbreakable prevent that damage, it, it, it will reduce Fnatic's overall effectiveness in team fights. So timing on those abilities is so, so key as that objective has respawned. Well, let's see, Dragon already started off by Fnatic. Super Hot Crew going to be closing in slowly and not even remotely quick enough to even challenge for that one. Fnatic take it, the second of four. Meanwhile, we do have Myron pushing the top lane. And there is Peke actually going in aggressive on towards Kasing. Definitely not something that he was ever going to win. And Mima took down the turret in the top lane as well. So they trade Dragon for Tower. We do see that Kasing gets away thanks to that 100% damage reduction on first projectile. But Fnatic are going to secure this in a turret. They're going to be... A oh, they've even hooked Kasing. Oh, they've hooked Kasing. Can they take him down though? He's pretty tanky by now. The damage seems to be there though. It's Cyanide that will actually get that one. Wild Ghost was used on to Yellowstar. They've managed to hook Ralph at the back. He flashed away. Mima's right in the middle. Here comes Selfie from the side. Can they? take down anyone from Fnatic. Selfie trying his best to get on them. There's going to be a gold card any second. Actually, he threw it onto Mima here, and now they turn towards Peke. So us has got a shield. That's not going to be enough with a knock-up, though. And they get one back. They end up trading one for one. It's not over it's yet. It's not over yet. Cocoon comes in, another hook. Impaler's full HP. He could be doing damage here as the rest of the Super group. Come in, the knock-up, the ultimate. He absolutely destroys them. And now Cyanide, the last man left up for Fnatic, just got away from it, but what a turnaround fight for the Super Hot Crew there after Fnatic went aggressive with that first destiny. They chased so far down the line. Kasing was taken out before he could even get his ultimate available. And the reason I highlight that, it is still available if Fnatic looks to challenge any more objectives. Now, thanks to the extended chase, Super Hot Crew just ran everybody down. It was a little bit of a comedy of errors because no knockups landed. None of the Steel Tempest, the Mimer uh, Dragon's Ascendant connect, but thanks to that sweeping blade on Selfie as well as his flash, 
he just kept running everybody down. And initially, this team fight looked bad for Super Hot Crew, but the tankiness on Mima and the fact that um, Reckless, while he's strong, he needs the active from Ghostblade to be super terrifying, he just got shredded. Very good ultimate from Selfie, unlike yesterday against Darian. The strongest team fight. Windwall also blocked out that final goal card that Peke tried to get down. He probably would have been better just leaving the rest of his team to go down and leaving it alone. But in the end, that actually gives Selfie now a 4-0-1 scoreline. BF Sword and Pickaxe in there. That Infinity Edge is coming next. That is one scary Yasuo. Now, I want to highlight the weaknesses that we see from Super Hot Crew. Yes, they got four kills. Yes, they got the turret, which was great. But they had to run the entire length of the map to make that happen because nobody really landed the combo correctly. In addition to that, Fnatic are still stacking up armor. You can see the makings of Arrangian's Omen completed on the side of Cyanide. There is no armor for Soez yet, only the Hourglass for Peke. As that armor count begins to grab, go higher and higher, it becomes even more imperative for Super Haku to land the combo and very importantly focus the right targets because they have to get through a lot of defensive statistics. They're not there yet, which means this window of opportunity is still available. Right, yeah, I'm be far enough ahead when that does happen. They're gonna jump on Peke. He's gonna pop his onions. Will that be enough to get him out? No, it won't. And just caught out there. And again, Impaler showing the beauty of the Rengar. Just dives on them to start the fight off. Yeah, thrill of the hunt from the Wolf Camp. Just ran all the way through and comboing the stun from Rengar into the stun from Brown. The pick power of those two is very, very good. But what does it give Super Hot Cruise? 20 second death timer. They've got a minion wave working towards this inner turret. And we'll see how effectively they deal with this wave clear. A good wind wall will mitigate all of that glitter loss damage. So there should be another tower for the crew. Well, that's the thing. We talked about the wave clear, but the wind wall gets rid of it all if you put it in the right position. And just, you see it there at the backside of that turret. Nothing that Fnatic could really do about that one. The Super Hot Crew waltz on in and take their fifth turret of the game. And that leaves them with a healthy 3,000 gold lead. But look at Fnatic, they're actually moving out here. Okay, forget that one. We saw the scrying orb used by Reckless just to try and, uh, try and keep tabs on them, but they'd already left. And Destiny was available for Pekka, so they were trying to set something up and obviously decide to back away. So Super Haku regain control. They've got the tower lead, they've got the map control, but now they need to defend. And this is where it becomes difficult for them. Their wave clear, is somewhat reliant on short-range spells from Lucian and Yasuo on their Qs, or on Lucian's cooldown of the culling. Luckily, he does have some CDR from that Ghost Blade, so it will help them out, but we'll see how they invest it. There goes Peke. Oh, Peke has gone super deep on this one. The Lantern coming out will actually save them. The culling focusing on towards Cyanide, who goes down below half HP. And look at Selfie there. He was thinking about looping around from the back. Funnily enough, Mima wasn't involved. He'd gone towards that top lane and didn't have a teleport available, although that will be coming up soon. So as is, is off cooldown at this point. Fnatic, uh, I was going to say, seem to be happy Base with what tower. they've got. Are they going to tank this one up? It looks like they are. The Super Hot Crew have completely left it. Yeah, very, very smart play from Fnatic, but it's not uh, going down as quickly as Fnatic will want. It doesn't matter. Thrill of the Hunt is available for Impaler if he wants to go in. Now, what I liked about Fnatic, uh, the previous push, they were going to that inner turret while they had waves pushing top and middle. And I think the reason Super Hot Crew didn't go for their fight was to deal with that very large minion wave in middle, which Selfie went to go clear out. It's got him his Infinity Edge. And a smart call from Fnatic to realize no one from Super Hot Crew is there. The risk of being caught by multi-man ultimates is lower. So just tank it up and, and face check it. Yellow Star has got himself a Giant's Belt. He was sitting on a Giant's Belt and a Chain Vest towards the end of the game yesterday because he couldn't complete his item. But I really do believe that's going to be another Randian's Omen, despite the uh, uh, reduction in its effectiveness. So 10 seconds for the next Dragon in this game. If you look down the CS totals as well, the Super Hot Crew really have pulled ahead in that one with the pressure that they've been putting down on the map. Yellow Star playing it a little bit dangerously, I thought, but the rest of Fnatic were actually in there behind him as well. They want this Dragon, knowing that an extra bit of gold into their total would really help them come these next engagements. They start that one off. The Super Hot Crew, of course, gave this one up for basically free earlier, and they're already coming around the side. There's a knock-up from the Ultimate, but they've not got Selfie in range. He's doing the Dragon pretty much solo right now, and that Dragon is going to go the way the Super Hot Crew. Mr. R's been hooked in, but there's a knock-up across the team, and Fnatic dropping like flies on this one. Reckless is going to do some good damage back to Selfie, but it's Yellow Star that they want to focus on. Blade of the Rune King 
being used by Reckless to keep him up. And where is Peke gonna go? He's been caught at the back, trying to get away, but Impaler does the damage. Selfie gets another one on Reckless, and now Yellow Star is running for his life to try and stop the ace coming in for the Super Hot crew. I think they don't care about Reckless, uh, sorry about Yellow Star, they want the Baron. Such a good flank. Mima comes in from the sidelines, and Selfie just insta gives Soaz. He jumped in there, managed to just melt through Soaz before the wild growth even happened. Pay very careful attention to how the Super Hot crew prioritized. Dragon first, Mima's on the sideline, and he's gonna jump in. I believe the knockup was just in onto Soaz. You can see him getting caught up by that last breath, and he just gets melted by the Super Hot crew. Once they get rid of the wild growth and that zoning power of the Glitter Lance, and obviously the slowing from wild growth, they stick together, they clump up, and that mid-game sort of power damage from physical comps works out. There's not enough armor for Fnatic to survive, and that was a strong fight, which should have got the Baron as well. well start pretty much dragging a dead rat with him there, as Reckless went down just after hitting the Lantern itself. And third Dragon, first Baron for the Super Hot crew, and a very healthy lead. Let's not forget, we already touched on it in the free game, 64 minutes was the last encounter between these two teams where the Super Hot crew were doing incredibly well, controlling Fnatic, had a big gold lead, but they really struggled to close the game out. Let's see if they've improved that in the weeks that they've had since then. We're, we're theoretically in a similar situation. You know, previously Fnatic had the makings of a pick comp. They had a Trundle top lane in Nidalee, uh, a poke comp rather. Trundle top lane with uh, Nidalee middle and they were just buying time for Spears to land. For Fnatic now, they'll be buying time with the wave clear of Twisted Fate and Lulu. And if Super Hot Crew can start the uh, side lane management game effectively, they can buy time. Thrill of the Hunt, Impaler's looking for someone. And we'll have to see how quickly you can find anyone. Something we also haven't mentioned or talked about is the stacks on his Bone Tooth Necklace. It's currently only at six, because he's at three, three, and three. So bonus stats, his movement speed while out of combat, and his leap range, very importantly, is increased. So he's going to be able to initiate safer and secure from a longer distance. We already saw pretty much uh, Peke falling by the way, was trying to do damage from the side. As we are going to see Destiny pop once again, they're going to go for Impaler and Mima this time around. The Super Hot crew not really in a position to be fighting this one. They are finally coming around, but it might just be too late. Colleen coming in from the side. Ulti's not going to get the knockup. Selfie won't get that either as they manage to hook in Kasing. And are oh, the Super Hot crew are going to chase here. They're the ones with Baron on, but they've lost their jungler already. It's a good chunk of damage down. Let's see if they stick around and try and get the tower. And that is the strength of Twisted Fate. He manages to come from the sidelines. With the Hourglass and the Death Cap, he does have a lot of burst. And he was able to just melt Impaler, who has still not built up defensive itemization. Yes, more of Mamortius is completed, but that's not going to make you survive against a Morella Nomicon and a Death Cap. So Impaler, shredded. That's going to put a big stall factor on Super Hot Crew's push, and Fnatic playing catch-up. Now, they need to be careful, because they've lost access to Destiny for a little while longer. No, that ward scanned out. You saw Yellow Star waiting off to the side. He was trying to have a go on that one. And we can see there the gold difference between the teams over time. A small period where Fnatic had a slight lead, but that has dropped to over a 6,000 gold lead now for the Super Hot Crew. Just showing you what those few kills, the Dragon and the Baron really can do for a team. Yeah, we need to see how Super Hot Crew break these uh, inhibitor turrets. There's only one outer turret left standing but it was the inhibitor turrets that stalled them out. That was the point where it took them 20 odd minutes to break through uh, a couple weeks ago. And you, you'll notice that Mima is just so tanky. In that previous fight, it was 4v2, and yes, they popped in Pele quickly, but Mima survived for an incredible amount of time. He's got a lot of HP thanks to Randy's and Sunfire. He's got ammo, he's got armor. So Fnatic, if they spend any time trying to get rid of him, it just allows all of the damage from Super Hot Crew in, and we need to see Mime has got the opportunity to sort of flash over the wall or go for a Dragon's Descent, but he needs to hit knockups. We haven't seen a good uh, multi-man knockup combo yet from the crew. Well, we talked about the wave clear maybe being a problem for the Super Hot crew to break through when it comes to sieging up these turrets. And so far, Fnatic have done a good job of that. The knockup, Selfie dives in. Good wild growth for the Super Hot crew. Gonna focus on the Reckless. Cyanide the next one down. Peke off to the side. Can only guard, uh, gold card one man. And they lose three instantly. The Super Hot crew might be able to push for the win. Absolutely no hesitation from the Super Hot crew. They grab 
two members, both Pekka and Reckless, and even though Yellow Star mitigated all of the damage with Exhaust, it wasn't enough. They kept running down. The Super crew, they're looking to finish. They're looking to get more kills. I don't know about finish. They managed to get one. Soaz gets knocked up at the back. They're going to take the first Nexus to it down. There is Selfie. Ulti's off to Soaz. Kasing did go down, but the first Nexus to it falls. Next man up is in 15 seconds. This game is going over to the Super Hot crew, showing us that they really can close out games decisively when they're in the lead. That was an incredible finish to an incredibly well-executed team composition. The timer, the ticking time bomb of the armor was completely negated because as they got their items, as they had the Infinity Edges and the Blades of the Rune King, they found the picks, they found the targets, and you've got to give props to Selfie for this game. He found Heke, or he found Reckless in a lot of those team fights, and that was a great, great picture. And patience there really paying off for them. Wondering when they'd finally get through, and you saw the ultimate out of Kasing, just catching ex Peke right at the end there to get that knock-up, and that was the start of the fight. They had to use a wild growth on him instantaneously. They would have probably lost him if they'd have not done that. Reckless, however, was right there on top of them. He went down quickly in front there. Once you lose that big AD carry in Twitch, you're just gonna kind of topple over like a house of cards. In this particular composition, for Fnatic, I would argue that maybe the tidal wave of Nami may have been more disruptive. Yes, there's a lot of peel and a lot of protection that Thresh can offer, but the moment Super Hot Crew got through Thresh or, or dashed over it, the box wasn't a problem because Rengar can leap, Shivana can leap, Lucian can dash. All of them can move around. Had that been a tidal wave that could interrupt some of those abilities, maybe it would have worked out better, but that's hindsight. And I was nervous for Super Hot Crew. I felt that their, their composition needed to land multi-man hits. They didn't even need that because they just had so much chase potential and they caught and punished Fnatic's positional errors. And we said yesterday, the thing that, come on, let's be honest, lost in the game was that they made a bad call. They yep. engaged onto Darien, the tankiest man, in the team. They ended up losing that team fight and therefore the game after winning three or four, maybe even five team fights before that. But there was none of that inconsistency, none of that indecision from the no. super hot crew here today. And once again, they also play the early to mid game uh, minion waves very effectively. Mm. Super hot crew have, have got a very clear understanding of how and when they want to move around the map. And they're seldom uh, dragging their feet. So very solid performance that evens them up seven and seven for both of these teams. Well, brilliant win for the Super Hot Crew. And it looks like Shox is standing by on stage with the Super Hot Crew's Mr. Riles. So let's send things over to her. Thank you very much, Joe. Yeah, um, Mr. Rale, as Trevor said, you didn't drag your feet. You just close out the game in one split second. Um, I want to ask you how yesterday's loss, which was also decided in one split second, um, influenced the way you decided to finish this game today. Um, I don't know if it's influenced that much. Yesterday, we, it was kind of a long game and we were not really sure how the game will go because we were so far behind. Um, and today we were pretty confident because we got pretty far ahead and yeah, Selfie was going nuts this game, so we were pretty confident. Yeah, Selfie was absolutely huge. Um, talk to me about your bottom lane matchup versus Reckless, what you t uh, talked about in the video before. You said, I know he's better, it depends on what champions we play. And then they first lock in Twitch. How did your confidence level go from there? Um, I didn't really expect him to pick Twitch. Uh, I thought he didn't really like the tournament anymore, and I actually expect him to pay, pick Lucian, and I expected myself to play Kog'Maw. Um, um, but yeah, I, I, it didn't really change that much that he picked Twitch. And finally, um, in a vi very beautiful victory here, and a great, great working together with your new support, even in that short period of time. How has it been? How does he compare to We Will Failure in his playstyle, Kasing? I think the difference between Yero and Fela is that Yero is a little bit better in lane. We obviously couldn't see that because the lane swap, but he's more confident in the early, early levels, so the early levels for me is fairly easy. All right, well, congratulations and thank you very much. No problem. Now, we're going to step off the rift for just a moment, but when we come back, we're going to break down this game and the Copenhagen Wolves take on Gambit. Don't go anywhere. Because Storm said he likes your haircut, Peke. I don't know. I don't think it looks too short, honestly. I think it looks fine. It looks really... Uh, and it, like uh, We usually say fresh in Sweden. Like. Can you get a room, you two, please? Like, yeah. It's not over yet! It's not over yet! Cocoon comes in, another hook. Impaler's full HP. He could be doing damage here with the rest of the Super Hot Group. Come in, the knockoff, the ultimate! He absolutely destroys them!
them. So far for now, he's done a good job of this. And knock Selfie dives in. Good wild growth for the super hot crew. Gonna focus on the reckless. Cyanide's the next one down. Peke off to the side. Can only guard, uh, gold card one man. 